Good afternoon. Certainly uh, a dark day for the Detroit Police Department. Uh, this is our second loss, and when we talk about this individual. Let me just fir first start talking about Captain Jonathan Parnell. Uh, there's so much that I can say, but I first want to give sincere condolences to the family and the loved ones of Captain Jonathan Parnell and my deepest sympathy to the members of our department who have served with distinction with him over his plus 30-year career. Yes, we are family, and when we lose a member of our family, we all feel it. You know, Jonathan was an extraordinary officer, a leader, who contributed more to this department and the community than I could ever say. He cherished his family and the department members he worked alongside, and we all loved him back. You know, uh, as I was talking to uh, a close deputy chief of him, he said one thing. He referred to him as a true leader, a true friend, and a great person. So he did leave a significant impact during his 31-year career. Everyone loved him. And we talk about people that serve with distinction, but really, he did serve with distinction. Uh, just a short story. Um, when I first got here six and a half years ago, almost seven now, uh, he was a sergeant working in our commercial auto theft unit, highly regarded and respected. And he had taken the lieutenant's test, uh, and he came up for promotion. And the thing that stood out for me is that his entire team came to my office and said, Chief, we love him. He's a true leader. Please don't move him. And so, well, the captain never came to me, or then the, the now lieutenant didn't come to me. I just said how it was important for his career development to move on to another assignment. And they were sad. They were very disappointed. And as things would have it, uh, he moved on as a lieutenant into another assignment, uh, certainly performed in a very extraordinary fashion. And not long after making lieutenant, he was promoted to captain, uh, where his last unit, one of the most elite, challenging units in our department, our homicide unit. And of course, I've had a number of conversations with him about the work. I remember sending him to Los Angeles to look at what Los Angeles does in their homicide investigations. One day he came back and told me, he said, you know what's funny, Chief? You know, we handle about the same number of homicides as L.A. But what's distinctly different, we do more with so much less. And that I know, having spent 28 years of my life. So a true leader, a never a complainer, uh, just wanted to make sure uh, his men and women were putting forth the very best. So again, to the DPD family, I want you to know that we're very proud to work along each and every one of you. I know this is a very difficult time. And while the COVID-19 situation continues here in Detroit and around the world, I also say how humble I am to be leading the extraordinary, extraordinary men and women of this great department. The dedication in serving the people of Detroit and coming to work each and every day is more vital than ever. And I cannot thank our police officers. I can't thank enough our civilian employees, particularly those who are also on the front line for their continuing bravery. As this situation continues to evolve, I want to remind everyone, if you feel sick, or if you interacted with someone showing symptoms, including consistent coughing, sneezing, shortness of breath, and fever, please don't come to work. Seek medical advice and stay home. And I'm going to get ready to close out, but as I do, I know this is a question that many have. Uh, when you talk about the number of members of the department that are quarantined right now, I'm going to break it down both by sworn and civilian. Right now we have 300 and 31 sworn that are quarantined, 70 civilians are quarantined, and we anticipate by weekend that 135 will be returning. Um, I will also say that 18 of our members have been diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, but I want to take a moment to thank Wayne State for their ability to 
initiate testing, turn the results about very quickly. We were able to get many first responders tested, and because of the aggressive testing, uh, that's one of the reasons why we've seen the numbers that we have. And you may not see it in other agencies, but uh, we have the opportunity to test in such a manner. Again, as I've said over the last several days, I want to thank both the mayor and certainly Dr. Dunn for their leadership and really taking an aggressive posture in keeping our first responders safe. So with that, I'll turn it over to the mayor.